All right, so welcome to one of the most real breeder chit chats that we've had in a minute. This is with our good friend, CV420, breeder of the Black Tunico. This one right here is not the first time, not the second, but probably the third time, if not more, that he's been on the show. And this is the first time that it's in the podcast format where we're not live, which really allowed for this beautiful open format that did go a little bit longer than usual. So warning, it's a little bit longer than an hour, but it's full of gold. CB420 is by far one of the most passionate and knowledgeable breeders, like full on genetic nerds that I've ever met in my life. So for those of you genetic nerds, kick back and enjoy. But before we get into it, I wanna take a quick second and thank the sponsor of this podcast, Pulse Grow. You see, these are the guys that make the monitors that I've been using and loving more and more inside of my tents. Mostly the Hub VWC kit. This is what I've been plugging into my substrate to be able to monitor exactly what my soil moisture is and my dry back on a daily basis, no matter where I am. And it's not only this VWC kit that connects to the hub, but an array of different monitors. Whether you're monitoring pH and EC in your reservoir or feeding tank, VPD, temp and humidity inside the tent, the guys over at Pulse have you covered. So make sure to check out pulsegrow.com for everything grow room monitoring, like literally everything. Make sure to use code HOMEGROWTV at checkout to save yourself a nice chunk of change and it helps support the channel. Much love and thank you to everyone who's been using that code and thank you Pulse Grow for sponsoring this podcast. Now, let's jump into it. CV420, my man, dude. Welcome back to the show, brother. Thanks for coming and how you doing, dude? What's up, Dakota? Really good, brother. Thank you for having me. Um, Everything. It's a pleasure to be here always with you know, my favorite show and, and my favorite host. So bro, this is um, a new con a new concept, bro. Cause we haven't done this on the show before. So just for you guys to have context, CV and I were talking on Instagram before we were DMing back and forth. There's a lot of really cool conversations to be had and we wanted to catch up and do a call. And I was like, bro, what do you think about just doing this recorded? We do it for the podcast, fill everyone on in what's coming. Cause I'm sure as shit really curious about a lot of the, the stuff that you have coming, bro. You've been around doing some big stuff. So we got some big stuff and I figured, fuck it, bro. Let's record it. Let's get it up on the podcast, bro. And so it's the first show. We don't really even have any, any like bullet questions or any of that kind of stuff. It's just a free flow chat and a catch up. So heads up for you guys on that. Welcome to the show. And let's start off, bro, with, with this, because I know you just got back from somewhere, bro. Tell me about your trip to Argentina. What was going on over there? So in Argentina, like crazy things are happening because, you know, the size of the country and how they're all in the deep south, they've been pretty much isolated from everything. So it's, it's hard to import. It's hard to get things over there. Like, you know, good leads, good, uh, good sodiums, good equipment. Um, so mm -hmm. they've been pretty much just having you know, to construct the industry by themselves. Uh, so it, it's crazy how, how the movement, how big the movement is down there and how passionate the people are. Um, and, and it's definitely like one of the biggest movements in South America, uh, next to Colombia, next to Chile. Um, definitely those three countries are, are in my opinion, I've been visiting, um, all yeah. of them, uh, between last year and this year. And, and those are the three that, that are really taking, you know, the, the, the the flag you know um so over there we started doing um first of all we started uh doing what we call nationalization um of our genetics right so yeah we have them registered here with ICA so now we have to take them over there to Argentina and with the uh, with with the entities over there that regulate um things like you know plants and grows and everything like that um, we have to register our genetics over there so we can enter the selling seeds in Argentina. Now, the good thing about seed sales in Argentina is that anybody pretty much who has a register and has a, a space to do it in their own home can register mm -hmm. genetics and seeds, right? Um, oh, wow. So it, it's it's been very, you know, interesting to see how it unfolds over there. A lot of brands and a lot of companies are coming up from people who are just making genetics in their in their basements, you know, and they're using pretty good cuts and they're doing a good job with selections because um, they're actually like, you know, traveling the world and bringing back a whole bunch yeah. of, of fire, you know, because um, when we talk about cannabis, I think it's, it's gotten to be subjective, right? I think it's gotten to be like, 
like a fine wine, right? Yeah, and brother. Heck yeah. You, you know, like a fine wine, um, it, it literally like, you know, it, there's no real competition. You can't really say there's the best wine in the world. Like, yes, there's competitions and they do get those titles. But yep. at the end of the day, the next year, there's another best wine in the world. And pretty much, you know, it could be per categories. It could be the best, uh, you know, strain. So at the end of the day, it's the same thing with cannabis. You know, I think um, if you just know how to select correctly, right, and you keep, mm-hmm. you know, the five or four check marks, um, you know, in, in mind when you're doing these selections, I think there shouldn't be any problem with future breeds. I think there shouldn't be a problem with future, you know, genetics and crosses. If, if the person right. in charge of it, you know, be it in a big, massive location or be it in a small tent, you know, if he gets that <laughs> logic correct, you know, and he breeds for, for proper characteristics and for proper fire, you know, how we just talk about it. Um, yeah. There's no reason why the offspring won't be good, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that's what Argentina's living right now. That's why Black Twitter yeah. is pretty much, uh, we've had a very, very great, um, uh, relationship with the Argentinian community, with the Argentinian growers, with the Argentinian banks. Um, we saw yeah. this in Spanibus. It was pretty uh, crazy um, because in in the Pure Sativa booth where we were for the first time um, ever, um, I think it was a col- uh, the first time uh, literally we got to sell seeds in, in the Spanibus. Um, and it's really hard to get a spot at Spanibus. So we had to... Right. Uh, like make a nice deal with our with our distributor in, in Europe, which is Pure Sativa, and give them you know the distribution for Europe, and and that's how we got you know next to great people like um, uh, Big Buddha Cheese, Milo, rest in peace. You know he he died right. people, um weeks ago, and Karma Genetics, and our homie Ramon from Grounded, and um, you know. Uh, a whole bunch of like perfect tree crew. Um, what else? We were next to Mosca Seeds. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of people that I would never think in a million years I would be sitting next to. You know, sharing mm-hmm. um, you know, sharing genetics and, and just sharing stories with it and, and continuing our our you know our our learning process in, in, in this great industry, right? So. And, and right. going back to what I was going to say, the Argentinian crew was there 100% of the time. They were chilling with us in That's the VIP. Um, they were, you know, chanting the black tuna out. They were wearing the shirts. Um, Heck so yeah. we felt like we had a bigger responsibility, you know, than just Colombia. Uh, we felt that now our responsibility extended itself to South America. And that Beautiful. we are one of many brands right, that that's representing South America in this game. You know, I think it's just like in the United States, you don't have one amazing flower company. You have 30, you don't have yeah. one amazing extract company. You know, you have 30, um, at the end of the day, they all, you know, live in this, in this world where, um, each of them stick out, uh, for their own characteristics and reasons. Uh, but at mm-hmm. the end of the day, they're all good and, and you've got to try them all. Know, people will have their favorites and, and it's like everything but at the end of the day you gotta you know be very very on top of stuff right dude so what was the day-to-day like over there so you, you I, I assume you guys were over there a small team or, or a good section of black tuna over there if it was just yourself but paint a little picture because how long were you over there for and what were some of like the actual activities that you had your hands in on an ongoing basis i was there a couple of uh long weeks and months um because we're consulting on a whole bunch of big projects well actually just one big project for now um but it's been one of the best reasons to see black tuna genetics you know in 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 a real big uh production um Ugh. industry right because th- this this company um you can search it up it's it's called canava and it's a government owned company um yeah and and they're literally the pioneers of cannabis growing in 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 argentina right they're, they're seven right. years they were founded about seven years ago and it was a very interesting project because it was the first time they 
you know, involve the government instead of private companies. So this actually led to progress, right? It wasn't just boasting up uh, private stocks for some people to get rich. It was literally like they needed to use the resources that taxpayers gave them, you know, to show results um, and, and at the end to make medicine available to the patients, right, at a very low cost. And mm-hmm. that's what they've done. Uh, the, today you can find in all the pharmacies in the region and, and, ho- and in a couple of weeks you'll be able to find it national, uh, the first CBD tincture. Um, yep. And it's for epilepsy and it's for a whole bunch of stuff. And it's going to be very, you know, uh, accessible at a good price for, for everybody. Um, and it's going to be from from government owned facilities, which pretty much is, is the taxpayers facilities. You know, it's public. So it's the people's right. it's the people's company that works for <clears throat> the people. So it's the first time that we've seen, you know, 220 thousand kit and 220,000 um limonai mangoes f2s growing from seed wow. you know in 55 hectares and you know 15 hectare wow. plots uh with Dude. everything you know machine uh you know there is uh like obviously there's a human resource a large human resources you know to to, to harvest like 15 hectares you're gonna need at least you know uh, three days and you're going to need teams of about 30 to 40 people. Um, right. but they are using the machines, right? They're harvesting with machines. Yeah. Um, they're, they're opening, uh, you know, the, the next, they're, they're prepping the land for the next harvest with machines. They're, they're dumping clones and seedlings into the hole with machines because at the end of the day, there's so much land and so much work that, you know, it has to be, um, with a whole bunch of the integration, right? So it's yeah. been amazing because um, they were working with other genetics that were not stable at all. And they were having a hard time uh, just even like uh, um, harvesting, right? Because if you have a lot of phenotypes, if, if you have 40 different types of phenos, one is done in week 10, another one's done in week 9, another one's done in week 8, another one's done in week 7, you know, it's mm-hmm. going to be a big mess. Um, and if they're all different colors, shapes, and sizes, it's going to be an even bigger mess. Uh, and you're probably just going to need to extract all that cannabis, right? Now that we're going into the exportation game, people need, you know, the pounds or the kilos of, of the cannabis we're exporting to pretty much right. be very much the same, right? Now, people are doing clone-only productions, but when you're talking about, you know, 15-hectare plots, it's very, very hard to, to clone, you know, 25,000 or even, you know, 50,000. Uh, right clones and then you know take them out to 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 the to the field so over right. there what we've been doing is pretty much you know um building what is what will be you know one of the biggest uh smokable flower exportation companies you know in argentina um like always it, it sucks that the argentinians can't you know enjoy it yet they can just enjoy like you know the, the CBD oils because that's the only thing that's legal. Just how Colombians only enjoyed you know topic creams and like you know little tinctures mm-hmm. that that had to be sold as cosmetics because you know the Colombian government didn't get it. Uh, yeah. So the same thing is happening over there, you know, and I think it's it's uh, it's part of like the it's part of of like the jump to the rec market, but definitely like these companies are looking for, for, uh, other options, you know, because at the end of the day, when you talk about those type of facilities, like we're talking about millions of dollars in, in investments and, yep. and you, we have, you know, the, the company has to get them back because at the end of the day, it's, it's for the people from the people. So, um, that, that's what we're working on, right? We're working on, on getting them the perfect grade A flower, so Germany and Israel and all these other countries will import with no problems. Uh, they wow. have a great pro is that they they live you know where they grow is pretty much a, it's very cold and dry. So flowers mm-hmm. like I don't know if you've been seeing the things that I've been posting lately. The flowers look like indoor flowers. The amount of resin and terpenes that there are is oh. just ridiculous. Um, yes. I got jealous. I'm like, wow. And there I thought Santa Marta was killing it. Like, no way. Like, 
you know, these people. Dude, are is that, that that Selva Negra that you sent me? Was yeah, that one of them? So Selva bro, Negra. Let's, th- th- let's, let's talk about that thing for a sec. Cause that's going to be on the screen. You bet your butt, bro. That's already on the screen. The viewers are seeing that right now for those watching on, on YouTube, bro. Let's talk about this thing for a second, dude. What's going on here? Yeah. So Selva Negra was really one of the craziest things we saw over there because she always expressed herself very dark, you know, in the indoors here in Colombia and stuff, but she never got to the platinum points. Um, yeah. so that, what you see there is pretty much just like the platinum, right? Like I think strains that got in that type of prefix, you know, platinum cookies, platinum, this platinum, that have yeah. definitely, you know, got into those expressions, right. To be called platinum. So the Selvanera was crazy because the cinnamon cookies really expressed itself amazingly, um, to the point where it actually like killed off all the Nicole traits. Um, and literally you just saw the amazing cinnamon cookies from Sin City Seeds. And you saw it to the maximum expression of, of you know, the wow. the purple to black to, to platinum fades that, that it has there. Um, she She's amazing. She's definitely not a producer like how we like them. You know, the, the more production type of plants are like the green ones and the, the ones that have mango lemonade um, yeah. characteristics. Because at the end of the day, you know, we see a whole bunch of pretty plants and everything, but but here it's a numbers game, right? So uh, the breeders have to finish their job. You know, it's it's not it doesn't cut it just to have the good turp with the popcorn nuts. You got to take it another mm-hmm. generation and look, you know, for the stacker with the same turps or even better turps and, and yeah. the same, you know, TAC content or whatever. And um, and I think that's the most important part. Cheers, bro. By the way, this here is dude. Dude, that's sick. What is it? What the Check it. Ooh, oh my God, bro. Fuck, that's good, man. <coughs> I'll never forget the dab I had there at your place, bro, before we went out on that tour. Holy smokes, bro, those diamonds that we were hitting. <laughs> oh my God. Talking about them, I have them here too. <laughs> oh my God, dude. It was just disgusting. Oh my God, so, I can't wait, man. It- so amazing that you mentioned that because back. When you came that day, remember how everything was really like R and D, and it was all, you know, we had everything up and down, all around. Uh, now I'm super happy because you're gonna get to see the farm in production, right? And you're gonna get to see yeah. seed production, and you're gonna get to see flower production, and you're gonna get to see a uh, state of the art cold room, and you're gonna get to uh. see, you know, that that can it it can dry. Um, it could dry like I think a ton every fourteen days. It's programmed to dry. Wow! Right? So oh my god! Uh, so take out like eighty percent of that in dry flour. So a quarter ton in dry flour will come out. Uh, one ton in, in wet flour will go in. Um, and then you'll see a whole. We're, we're building this uh, state of the art uh, uh, non solventless lab. So hopefully it'll be. Uh, ready wow. for that time also like so it's here in, in Santa Marta it's so hot that you know the rosin game is is a very big challenge so we're like screw it let's make a, a freezer and let's work inside a freezer you know at, yeah. my, at minus 10 or you know whatever the hell we can take it I want to take it down at least to 10 degrees Celsius you know I told the guys I'm like I don't care we have to go in with penguin suits like I want to work as cold as we can um, right. and it's been a nice journey to see how, how that's going to turn out. Um, and hopefully you're going to get to, if you don't see it operating, you're definitely going to see it, you know, in construction. Um, Heck yes. let's talk gonna, with that for a sec for yeah. anyone listening, actually, cause I think this is a good moment to bring it up. There is a massive cannabis cup and event happening this year here in Colombia. Um, and it's something I'm going with, you know, with everything, bro, all, everything I can, you know, hopefully some entries in the flower category, hopefully for a first time ever, some entries in, into live rosin, into solventless extraction. But I know no matter what, we're coming there. We want to document everything and we want to spend like an extra week. I think grower Joe from the basement grow show is going to be coming out to Columbia. So let's, let's transition for a second. Talk about dude, Copa Caribe, the details on that for anyone listening, bro. Cause believe it or not, bro, there's already people coming down to Columbia. We're getting hit up at home grow TV. People are making it to cups now bro so i want to throw it out with enough you know uh notice as possible anyone wanting to come down to columbia the dates for copa caribe where it's at yeah man it's it's gonna be amazing like you said people are actually you know uh making a big migration you know to to come compete um it's been the the beginning of this 
you know, we saw it with with a couple of people who came from Spain and came from this mm-hmm. and that to, to to actually compete. But now we're seeing a whole bunch of South Americans, a whole bunch of you know uh, Americans, Canadians. Everybody is 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 packing their bags and they and they want that cup, you know. Yes, so, so it's bro. amazing. It's gonna be the twenty first of July, um, and it's gonna be in Santa Marta, Colombia. So that's the region of Magdalena. It's pretty much the region where Cartagena, Barranquilla, and Santa Marta um as our coast so uh what i promise is it's gonna be the best you know cup party um that we could definitely do um cutting edge and uh black tuna um puffco punto rojo uh, have been putting in mad work to get all this prepped up for everybody uh the sponsors uh, that i didn't mention are also doing a great 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 deal of work because the sponsorship fees at the end of the day, we didn't make this into a fair because mm-hmm. I didn't want to have the companies or the brands spend a lot of money to come to a very, uh, you know, desolated area of Colombia where, where there isn't a lot of people. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I think fairs have to be, uh, in places where there's a lot of, you know, rotation. So people could either you know, sell because that's what they live off. They have to sell and get their brand out there, promote, you know, pretty much mm-hmm. there's two reasons why, why people go to fairs. Right. Um, but I also think that there's a difference between when it costs a lot of money, you know, it shouldn't just be to promote, you know, you should be able to, you know, get your money back or something to pay for cost. Um, and if right. it's just for promotion, then what you pay for better be, you know, very well seen in what you, and when you get right. So, Pretty much we yeah. wanted to make it a cup and also this place where sponsors can where, where competitors and sponsors could be in the same place and where yeah. only quality will meet quality, right? Um, Beautiful. I think at the end of the day, instead of having a bunch of people trying to sell stuff, I want a bunch of people trying to, you know, get to know each other and see what happens next. See, you know, Fuck who yeah. knows if Cutting Edge finds their next brand ambassador there. Who knows if, you know anybody if you find your next brand ambassador if, if any, you know or, or right. if something comes up or if you get the magic seeds from the this person that ends up being you know the your genetics favorite, yeah the exchange favorite, there bro right or if yeah. you learn something new because you know an og grower was there and gave you a little tip and, and that changed your whole grow and gave you 30 percent increase um so mm-hmm. that's that's what we want to you know generate we actually want to generate the community um and then have the aspect of the competition uh, in order to really keep the egos aside, um, and have a very nice place where competitors and judges could sit together. Um, Sick. you know, judges can be visibly seen. They don't have to be, you know, they're hidden and, right. and people can actually see what's competing, what's going on. Um, and, and why, you know, the, uh, this one and that didn't, right. At the end of the day, right. I want it to be very, very, uh, you know, very reflective of, of everybody's work and, and the judges and, and whatever anything needs to, to, you know, to happen for, for the cup to have a, a an improving aspect. Right. And, and to show beautiful, bro. Um, and to show people that, that South America is doing a great job and, and that, you know, now we can relate to everybody in the world and people could come visit us and, you know, and, and they'll have access to all these things that they thought, you know, were impossible or that didn't exist here in our country. Um, yes. So we took a really, really big aspect on the cup. The money for the sponsorships is the money that pays for the natural reserve. It's the money that pays for the VIP, which has free food, free drinks, free, uh, uh, free candy buffets. You get, you know, unlimited dabs at the Puffco bar. You get unlimited pre-rolls at the dab to yeah. the table. So, at the end of the day, like I tell the sponsors, I'm like, okay, you pay two fifty dollars, but that's what you're gonna drink, eat, smoke, and, and on top of that, when you already drink and smoked all your money, you're gonna get brand, you know, recognition, yeah. and you're gonna be able to that's chill dope. and have fun. So we thought about it like that, you know, we wanted people to get there and like feel that their money, you know, got well used. Um, so that's why, for example, for the com- for the competition, we're not charging fees to enter. Uh, samples like 
that you can wow, enter. That's the first. For that'd free. be the first cup I've ever been to. You know, or seen that that it wouldn't be like that. And it's more in it, like it just go there and compete to show. I've been to some that were so steep that I was like, man, this is. I feel bad for some of the other like. All those gardeners giving up forking up like a bunch of flowers that we've worked so hard for. Plus, we're like, this is a decent amount. We're talking in Columbia, bro. And I'm like, dang, dude. All right, let's, you know, let's do this. But I also didn't feel like the ethics were, I don't know. I don't want to get into that part of it, but I love 100%. that side of it, dude. When I heard that from you guys, dude, I was like, that's sick. You know, anyone just show up, bring your fucking A game. Exactly. That's pretty much it. The only thing that it's not going to get you on the judges' table is if you really don't meet the quality for Colombia to be represented by you, you know, like at the end of the day, it's not mm-hmm. even, I'm not even going to do like they do in some competitions where they call people out and they have them, you know, in front of everybody and they're like, oh, this shit. No, I'm literally right. like, I'm going to, I'm going to pre-assess the whole jar thing before it even comes out. And if, you know, somebody, you know, doesn't make the cut or something, they're going to be contacted, you know, super low key and nobody's ever going to know, you know, that, that they didn't reach the table. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. um, I knew that that was one of those factors because it, it always was for me. You know, like I look right. and I'm like, damn, I want to go in with four and different four categories. But then I'm like, damn, that's already two million pesos. I can't take the 10. <laughs> if I want to compete, yeah. do I want to take the 10? I can't do both. Right. So, and, and sometimes you as a gardener, like get it. If you're especially pheno hunting, bro, for the first time, we got like a selection I can look through of like 10 phenos. You might want to like send in for your best phenos to see just even a sense from other people. Just even get on the judges panel to get in other people's hands, not even expecting a cup, but just to get it out there. And you're like, dang, bro, I got to throw in four in this and then this category. So that's going to be really cool, bro. Do you have any idea of rough estimates of like what we could see maybe for like entry wise in a cup like this? Yeah. Of, um, of amounts? I'm hoping, you know, I'll be happy if we have 15 well, uh, well presented in each category. Obviously, you know, the edible category is a little smaller. Um, but we already know pretty much who's the edible pimps over here in Colombia, and there's just a couple <laughs> yeah, of them. Yeah, there's some good options. And I told them, you know, that. And also, what I want is, you know, maybe people are like, "Hey, I, you know, you guys put it in the middle of July. I don't have money to fly over there and get a hotel, and I don't have all this shit. You know, send your, send your, your through the mail. You know, send your uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, send your muestra, uh, your your sample, right? Yeah. I also tell people like, you don't have to be presently there for international and national judges to say, Hey, this is the best in Colombia, you know, in South America and in the world. Um, and, and that I think is pretty cool too, that you could literally just send, you know, your samples free of charge and get into, you know, an A game cup that's going to be judged by, you know, we've been seeing the judges and, and at the end of the day, um, we want to make it as fair as possible. So, I'm not judging. I'm not competing. You know, I'm just 100% there to make people happy and get as high as they can and, you know, yeah. get hydrated and go to the pool and, you know, have the best time in the world. That's my Dude, job. so it's, yeah, and it's at a resort, right? It's amazing. So- yes dude you know, dude. And, for those and, listening yeah we definitely extend the invite guys like i'm a huge promoter of columbia i love this place it's absolutely amazing and more events i go to you you meet more people that are coming here to explore the country they're already in the scene so i again this is a the 21st of july guys in santa marta is where you would fly into your final destination you probably go through bogota i assume but check it out man if you guys are listening to this right now you're ripped. You're like, dude, I'm just going to fucking go to Expedia right now. Just check it out. Fucking <laughs> look yeah, and just exactly. see. Exactly. And, and what I tell uh, people is that, you know, it's it's a perfect time, especially, you know, the, the dollar is, the change of dollars is ridiculous to Colombian pesos. Even, you know, for, for people in South America to come to Colombia, mm-hmm. it's very, very cheap for them. So I always tell them, um, you know, Santa Marta is a beautiful place that, you know, you're not going to see it in one day. You're not going to see it in two days. Um, but you could take the opportunity to come and if you want to compete, it's a serious competition that has serious ethics. It's a serious cup. Um, and you know, the judges and everything shows it, right. It shows that you're not going to get judged by people that you're not going to get, you know, like if I was going to get my Michelin star from my restaurant, I want Mm -hmm. the Michelin star people, you know, I don't want. Uh, some other company that's brand new saying, yeah, you know, we rate restaurants for you. Like, well, who the hell are you? Yeah. you know, who the hell, what have you done to show the world that your palate can be rateable, right? Like you can rate yes. restaurants. Like what have you done? Have you been 
uh, you know, have you eaten fine dining for 30 years of your life so you can know what's good and bad? Have you been a chef for like 30 years so you know what's good and bad? If you haven't, then don't yeah. rate because my your rating isn't going to be anything, mean anything, right? So at the other yeah, day, well I want these ratings, you know, to get our people jobs, to get our people more sales, to get our people recognized. You know, I want the, when Oni Seeds comes, I want him to go to one of the winners and be like, yo, I want to, you know, work with you. Or, hey, do you have a mm -hmm. license? Or, hey, you know, you want to go to the States? I'll pay you X amount of money if you just fucking wash for me or whatever. I want, you know, ABF to go to the winner and be like, here, here's the original forum cut crossed with blah, blah, blah. I see that you're the guy and I see, you you know, you're amazing. Here you go. You know, I want, yeah. you know, the Puffco crew to be like, yo, here, here's, uh, you know, the whole fucking set. You're the best fucking extractor, you know? Dude, that's really sick. And one question, do you think you've seen me at so many of the cups and I think even the viewers have seen some of these videos where we do lives there. We, you know, we try and get out as much as we can. Can Homegrow TV have a booth, bro, where we like have internet yes. hooked up? I got the cable yes. at 150 feet, bro. And we could be doing interviews there and let us know if you guys think that's a good idea. Throw a comment below if you guys are on YouTube right now watching this, because I think it's a great idea. We've tried to do it so many times and I kind of just stopped attempting, you know, and you've seen member <laughs> dude, last summer, bro. It was brutal. We we're there at this cup. I'm like chugging two bags through the field. I'm like, I'm, I think I'm just going to stop doing this for a bit, bro. And I seen, I heard about this cup at the beginning of the year, just rumors of it. Then I seen the official dates. Now we're doing this call and I'm like, bro, I'm going all in on this sucker. You know, I want to bring everything again. I have that fire in me to, to share, you know, and I think that this event is really something that I feel afterwards I'm going to be proud of like being a part of just even showing to the world, recommending it. And that's my true hopes, bro. And that's why I'm going in with everything and just showing up from a rooftop, bro, from now until we're there, dude, in, in July. Thank you, brother. And the answer is yes, of course. You know, um, I want you there. Um, the spaces, we're definitely going to see them because if you have a spot, you know, we can, you just got to choose it. You got to let me know what you want um, and where we can work all the interviews and everything. Um, it's going to be great. Uh, definitely. I, I want to count with you guys and definitely I want to see you also with, with the greatest, you know, because you're, you're one of, you know, the best, uh, growers we have here in Colombia. Even if you're not from Colombian descent, you know, we already, you know, we adopted you. So now bro, I was a past life guaranteed, bro. I was Pais in my past life guaranteed. So man. Now I never felt win, so Canada's not taking the cup, you know. If you win, Colombia's taking the cup. You're screwed. Bro, hey. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, bro. It's all sources from inspiration to actual earth has been drawn from this country. So for me, it gets all the credit, bro. Just for the inspiration of getting back into the game, how well it's been treating me as a grower to be like, yep, yeah, you know what? As without doing anything, you got 20 plant, you know, a uh, you can you can run 20 plants or something like this is an amazing country for growers in general and i know there's been these debates going on bro back and forth so me as originally as a canadian living here now going on a decade bro this august i still don't know exactly what's going on in these debates and i know there's like eight supposed to happen or something right yeah. can you fill us in just a little bit bro and like as deep or as general Perfect. as you want to say on this yeah, like yeah, what's yeah. going on i'm gonna go super super light because i'm fucking confused too sorry if i said a curse word yeah. i don't know if you can say them but you get I'm pretty confused. <laughs> but what I understand is yes, we're changing the constitution, right? So that's why it's very heavy. Each debate that goes on gets to a higher uh hierarchy, let's say, right? So each time we pass a debate, it gets to a more, let's say, conservative party type uh of people, right? Like now that we're in Congress and now that we're debating to change the whole constitution. It really touches, you know, the, the moral and social fibers of the country. So it's obviously very hard. It's going to be very difficult. Um, I'm surprised mm -hmm. that we've gotten this far. But as good politicians and like a good, uh, you know, country to get these things in action is, takes years. Nobody really has a sense. We've been saying, oh, it's going to be legal in two years. We've been saying that seven years ago. Um, yeah. so that's why I can't even like, I don't even want to say, oh yeah, six months more and we're good because it could be five years. It could be 10 years. Shit. It might even not happen if, if the one who's president doesn't like it, you know, and throws it back or if Congress doesn't like it and throws it back. But like you said, mm -hmm. at the end, I think the culture is already here. I think we're already got our 20 plants. Um, I think we're already doing the things that we need to be doing. Um, and it's going to happen sooner or later. I think we're just waiting until the United States does it federally. I'm seeing every single day, uh, more states from the conservative sides, uh, start, you know, coming over onto the green light 
for the regulations for the rec and medical use. So that gives me hope that definitely in our lifetime we're gonna see the rec market and the and, and the medical market go. But like I've learned to do, I don't depend on it anymore. Um, like I said, that's why we're looking at other countries that are getting more advanced. Um, that's yeah. why we opened up Argentina, Costa Rica. That's why we opened up Europe, because in Europe at least we can open up a black tuna club, you know, and we can right. we can live off something today. You know, in Argentina, you can open up an, o, an OMG, like an organization, and you can have mm-hmm. plants for patients today, you know, and you can live off that. Um, and what about both, Thailand? Thailand, I would love to go. Like, like, it's really far, and I don't trust it, that I would be able to be there and, and, right. and look after stuff, right? Um, but definitely, uh, if I could, I would, because, you know, Rolling Lion Circus opened up a dispensary. You know, and, yeah. and, and, and they export. Yeah, pulpit. just seeing. So, you know, yeah. if Rolling Lion Circus can open up a dispensary in Thailand, why the hell can't we? You know? Like, right. So are we like, I guess, yeah, that's the ultimate dream and question. Just seeing that, right? Like of what's going on in time. Like, oh my God, such a quick change from, you know, their king to where they are now. And then I'm like living in Columbia here going, are we next? You know, are we next? Am I going to be going soon down to, you know, El Poblado and crossing the street to go to the Black Tuna fucking place and have my, you know, my nice coffee and, and my beautiful doobie. And then, you know, it's, we're going there, right? We're next. Are we're, we? We're, we're, de- we're going there. We're definitely going there <laughs> and we're getting smart about it. Right. Because gotcha. now we're looking at the, and it sucks because the government always misses out. Right. Because now we're looking at gray areas. Now you see it's not dispensaries, it's clubs. And now you see, mm-hmm. oh, but it's not the whole club. It's just the VIP part. And now you see, yeah, but right now it's bring your own bud, right? But you got to pay membership, but you got to pay. So you're starting to see all these things that in six months are going to turn into, you know, either Barcelona clubs or they're going to turn into dispensaries. You know, it's either right. one or the other, depending on what the government, you know, says after these debates. But if they tell us no, then we're going to figure out a way to make organizations that have patience. No, because that's right. that's what we we're gonna definitely like you said we're next we're definitely next I think because as Colombians we've how. been very patient in letting the government decide for us but now I think we've got into the moment that um, we have to actually do it for them right like you see all these people for their legislations um, I see how uh, you know government uh, people talk about it you know they're still talking about basic stuff like oh you know. Uh, if we're going to have it legalized, we got to figure out what designated areas we use for people to smoke pop. And then I'm there thinking mm-hmm. in my head, brother, pick up a Google, you know, or AI or whatever, and see that that exists already. You know, in the United yeah. States, you got to smoke in your house because you're a patient. You can't smoke mm-hmm. in the car because you can't be on anything when you're in the car. You can't right. smoke in private public places because you can't even be so taking a drink, you know, with an open container in a park because there's kids, you know, and, and there's less and less places that are even allowing to smoke cigarettes now at parks, right? So mm-hmm. it's the same thing with cannabis. So if the guy is going to freak out and make us wait six months because they have to figure out or build designated areas, then it's not the right way to go. And we're still going to be stuck in the hole, right? He needs to yeah. figure out that, okay, it's either... We make that as designated areas for everything, right? For alcohol, for tobacco, and for cannabis. Or yeah. we just copy something that already exists. Just like, hey, take it home. Consume it on your own time. See what, you know, mm-hmm. things that are basic. So I think right. it's, it's definitely a culture problem and, uh, and uh, a social problem that the people, and I've told this, I've, I, I even told this to the face of, uh, he was, I think, uh, I don't know if he was a senator or something, but. I got invited to this mm-hmm. debate at a university, right, on why or why yeah. it shouldn't be. And I had to destroy the guy in front of his own, you know, school and university telling him, it's so funny how somebody who just got briefed on this five minutes before coming into this debate is uh-huh. talking with so much freaking empowerment. And like, we know, like, the yeah. only thing you know about this is whatever your associate and your and, and, and the girl that works for you behind the desk gave you a brief five minutes before you came in here, you know nothing, you know, you right. know absolutely nothing. And you're the one that's supposed to take 
and make decisions for us on this, you know, and, yeah. and you know nothing about it. So it's definitely uh, we're in the hands of people that that don't care and they don't know, right? Because at the end of the day, they have other agendas. They have other politics. They're, they want to win the next year election. They're not thinking about cannabis. And until cannabis is means 50% of the votes, they're not going to look at us. Right. You know, so unless yeah. they have a paper that says, hey, you know what, 50% of your voters smoke weed, you know, and like cannabis, the guy is not going to legalize it. But guess what? The right. second somebody comes and tells them that 50% of their votes is from cannabis consuming people, that guy will make everything in his power for that plant to be alive because that will mean him getting elected. <laughs> right. You know? So yeah. those yeah, are the clear. real deal things people don't like to talk about. I'm over it. Like, I just tell it how it is now um, because, I, like I said, it's crazy. You know, I like it's, it's every day is a different debate. Uh, and the other day right. was even crazier. You know, it was hilarious because the this other guy from the council, from the Congress is like, you know what? Yeah, we got to legalize it, but we also got to let everybody be able to sell and do everything. And I'm like, brother, so now you're telling me that everybody who died, like making this possible and got, you know, lost everything, their houses, their cars, because they invested and looked for investors that could get them to play in a pharmaceutical game, right? Because mm -hmm. something is, if I make my homegrown tomato, Right. And I sell it at the farmer's market. Right. That's not FDA approved. My kitchen ain't FDA. You know, my, my garden mm -hmm. isn't FDA. I'm not getting lab tested. Right. But that's yeah. farmer's market. People who go there usually know these things, you know, they yeah. know it's, it's organic and whatever. But right. when you go into pharmaceutical, nobody's cooking up aspirin in their backyard. You know, nobody's cooking up, you know, so it's, it's two different playing fields. You can't. You know, how you think Germany is going to buy cannabis from somebody who can't, you know, pass a, a microbiology test? They're not, yeah. you know. So why are you going right. to lie to our poor, you know, communities and tell them, yeah, go instead of using the money you buy to use corn, and instead of selling the corn you usually use to feed your family, go grow cannabis yeah. because right. somebody's going to buy that cannabis. It's a lie. Yeah. Nobody's <laughs> going to buy that cannabis because that cannabis <laughs> yeah. is going to be grown in a right. mountain with water, uh -huh. you know, falling from the sky, getting it bud rot. They're not going to get the best genetics because they don't have, you know, the, the the help from the government to get the genetics at a good price. Then there's no right. help at all, you know, to clean the land, to do the labs, to do the proper drying. So at the end, they're just going to get into these crazy loopholes where they're going to lose money. And then they're going to blame the government again, right? When the right. government was supposedly the ones that are going to give them opportunities to play in the, in the cannabis market, you know, like... Right. There's something, that, there's two different things, you know, I think there's, and, and the government doesn't even know, you know, they're still going back and forth. So, like I said, it's going to be it's our crazy. job to do it, right? And if we're home growers, if we have 20 plants, then just like in Barcelona, home growers with 20 or 200 plants, they sell it to dispensaries. And it's the dispensary's job to see if that product has mold, passes a test, you know, does mm -hmm. all that thing. So we're going to have to do the same thing, you know? Um, if they don't regulate it. Right. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. I know you're the one to ask. And I know there's actually, every time we go into it a little bit on the channel and we talk about any of these things happening, there is more and more interest. There is actually a lot of people watching and seeing what's happening in Colombia. And there's just so many things changing day by day, bro. We get messages from Germany as things change over there. The growth in, in Thailand since, you know, they're, they're ever changing. So it's unbelievable, bro. But one of the things we also get asked nonstop ever since our first interview, bro, is about black tuna. When, you know, you know, like what's coming, what's going on. Let's transition and talk about it a little bit, bro. Cause I know it's a never ending, beautiful journey of different recipes and different things that you're cooking up and doing over there. What's on, what's on their horizon right now. And what's on the works for black tuna, bro. So I'm going to tell you, it's, it's been a nice ride. And, and it, like you said, it's amazing because it's never changing. When we did the first line of black tuna, we never thought that it was going to be you know, for the growers community, we always did that thinking of, of large scale production for LPs, you know, for, for licensed producers, right. Um, mm -hmm. people who, who had experience first with plants and two that had large scale productions to be able to see the benefits of the actual black tuna strings. Right. Um, so in the beginning, when I saw the feedback 
on something that wasn't even made for 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 the smoking and rec community it was amazing it mm-hmm. was beautiful you know we got so much you know like what, what, what this what this journey's been you know like all the strains um and pretty much all the strains are, are very much dominant in the nicole um in the nicole aspect of, of the of the crosses right um yeah shout out to marimbero shout out to gato uh shout out to jose shout out to to matitas 420 which pretty much and shout out to all of antioquia you know for and and, and also by el cauca for keeping her alive yeah um all these years you know she's she's a real uh she's a real keeper for large-scale production right um i think the u.s they find the keeper uh and they ha- they fill their indoors and they fill their their markets and everybody has the cut and everybody has a clone so everything's you know gets done right to the proper way here in colombia you know the black market depends on three to four grows mm-hmm. you know and they're massive grows and if those grows don't have good genetics well the people won't smoke good you know and if they those grows aren't you know doing shit correctly like drying correctly or, or packaging without you know making a brick weed well colombia's <laughs> gonna smoke you right. know whatever the hell they're putting out yeah. So at the end of the day, uh, the Colombian market is, is very much controlled by a small group of people. Um, and if they don't have <laughs> the good genetics and the good proper things, then, you know, Colombia is pretty much a large percentage of the people that don't grow, that don't have access to, you know, to friends that grow like us and have like very unique um, products. Uh, they won't, you know, they will never know what that is. So Nicole helped us. Uh, to, to up our game, you know, it helped to up the quality. It helped to, for Colombia to make the best bubble hash since, you know, since we, Colombia has a big history of bubble hash because, you know, now we're making rosin and stuff, but Colombia, if you see in uh, Jorge Cervantes, the cannabis Bible, mm-hmm. the pictures of the hash making, uh, that's all in Colombia. The, the table, the wooden table with a hundred and something strains, yeah, uh, that's in Colombia, and that's I'm talking about. I think that was 2007, 2006. Right. You know, that's that's a lot of years ago. You know, that's pretty much yeah. 15 years. But back in the day, we couldn't be public about it. Like back in the day, even Jorge Cervantes, if you look at those pages, they even change uh, our home, our our people's name. Like they don't say, you know, they don't say Gato from Marimberos, or you know, they don't mm-hmm. say. Uh, Wow, you know, Matitas for twenty. They don't say they yeah. change the name, but all the content and everything that he learned when he came here is Colombian. It's from Colombian people who fucking invented that shit back in the wow. day. Wow, yeah, right. And they learned from Mila. You know, Mila Hash Queen. They they acquired how she used to make bubble hash, and they brought the first bubble bags from the pollinator company, and they brought the first pollinator machines over here to Cauca. Yeah, and they did large scale production. Like no wow. joke, not like the little no like large scale. Like they got the bags, yeah. and you know how we like lift the bags up by hand, and we yeah. have to drain the water. Well, back in the day, they used to make the bubble bags. The whole thing didn't drain. The only part that drained was the bottom. Right? Okay. So back in the day, when you used to drain bags, it took way longer than when you drain them today because now the bottom part has an extra little fucking side thing on the top where yeah. the water actually drains from on the upper part. Right. And yeah. there's even some that are completely, all of it is mesh. Um, right? Yeah. So you just fucking come up and it comes up. But, you know, you want the ones that like make it funnel, but not funnel enough to get clogged by the actual right, you know, by by the the material itself. But, so back in the day, what they did was they told Mila, they're like, Hey, we're going to fucking put holes all around the fucking bubble bags. And we're going to have, uh, rings four rings. So they got, um, you know what, where they, where, where they hang like the meat when they're like moving it around, like yeah. the big chunks of meat, like those fucking meat, meat grabber uh-huh. things. Right. And they would hook the fucking things on those things, suspending them yeah. so they could keep working while the bags would fucking. Wow. You know, just, and just, just hundreds just, of uh, bags, like just hundreds and hundreds yeah, of bags. Yeah, just hundreds of bags just fucking holding like being fucking drained <laughs> wow. of the water, you know, waiting to get collected with the spoons. Yeah. Um, And in those ages, there wasn't any, um, there wasn't any uh, freeze dryers. 
Right. You know? yeah, so it of was course. just dried old school, you know, on top of pizza boxes. The pizza boxes were obviously new. Yeah. You know, and that would always become they used to mix all the, the meshes, you know, all the way from one twenty U to twenty five U. They mix it all. And mm-hmm. and what they added to the recipe, which not a lot of people were doing, is that they took all that gra- gra- granulated mixed hash and they threw it in meat grinders. Whoa. So right. the meat grinder, what the meat grinder is, and you could all see this in Jorge Cervantes' book. They have yeah. the pictures of the meat grinder. You could even see that meat grinder in uh, Greenhouse Seed. Uh, they always show the picture. It's a hash ball, super big. It's Franco, yeah. with Gato. And yeah. it's the meat grinder picture showing like the hash coming out of the meat grinder. Um, and that meat grinder, what it does is that it makes that that uh, that grainy, sandy hash, it makes it into a full melt bubble. Right. Right. With a consistency of chocolate. Right. So Just now mashing it together it almost like turned the... into chocolate. Right. And it was known what they call they call it to this day chocolate. And we were the ones in charge of producing Brazil's and Argentina's hash. Mm-hmm. You know, that was Colombia. Colombia was in charge of producing Brazil and Argentina's hash for the last 15 years. Wow. So now nothing has changed. All we're doing is getting better technologies. We're getting, you know, harvest rights. Now yeah, we're free. Dude. Now we're, we're doing live plants instead of dry plants. Yeah. Because back in the day also, like, they didn't understand that concept. Like, you know, they've like, adapted. Like, hey, yeah, they yeah. took the information on so well. Like everyone I meet at the Cups, or at least our community, right? The same one that we always hang out with at the Cups and stuff. You see how many of them is like the core of it. It like almost stems from like their passion of of concentrates, you know, the presses, how they've taken their, that technology, some of them creating their own and different versions. Like it's just so cool to see, bro, how as a culture here, they've really, and it makes sense now that you're saying that with everything bubble hash. Okay, well then the next step. Wow, have they took it onto that? And like going and diving into their education when someone comes here from outside, right? And they they hold the course, dude. Everyone's going, you know, and and investing to make sure that they can learn, bring that to the country, and ultimately bring it to the market, bro. Like in two days from now, we're filming for the episode we did. Just we've never done it before. We harvested twelve. We fresh froze them. And uh, Heisen's is coming up and he's bringing the harvest right here to the house, bro. Like, it's crazy though. That's here in Colombia. And I think people watching it sometimes watch a channel and don't even realize that we're down here in Colombia, bro. And it's it's changing so fast. Um, the level is just higher and higher. And it just makes me want to learn more as a home grower. How is it like as a home grower putting a lot of that into into extracts, you know, into, into rosin and that kind of stuff, bro? 100%. Um, rosin is is the final expression of of the of that uniqueness of the strain right of that plant um Mm -hmm. the other day i was talking to my associates because it was hilarious how once the kipambele rosin aged it smelled exactly like when you would walk into to ten thousand to a to a greenhouse with ten thousand kipambele in week eight Right? Yeah. Just the same smell, the same exact smell. So I told them it would be cool to make like those old school uh, ha- halls commercials where the guy would be like in the office, like super boring, everything gray. He yeah. would pop open the halls, eat it. Like he would close his eyes, open them, be in Mount Everest, like yeah. fucking hiking yeah. with a bunch right. of cold, like just yeah. cold everywhere. Like, shh. And uh-huh. then the motherfucker opens up his eyes again and he's in the office like bored as fuck and and then it says halls, like taste yeah. the freshness of the mountains, whatever <laughs> yeah, the fuck. Bro. You know, uh, so at the end of the day, that's what rosin is. Like I told him it would be amazing. And there's a commercial where a motherfucker comes, opens up that rosin, smells it, closes his eyes, gets transported to a fucking field with 10,000 plants. Birds right? chirping and, then, and shit too. You know, people like fucking cutting plants, like harvesting. And then he fucking wakes up again in his office. He's like, oh yeah. shit, fuck amazing. And then it says taste you know whatever the fuck you make up a clever ass shit but yes. at the end of the day people don't understand how it is that like you're getting the essence of what the grower breeder and extractor have done throughout the whole process right and, and that's that's mind-boggling right it's crazy yeah bro dude it was a there was big news for columbia at, uh it was what was it dabadoo or what was the event in spanibus there yes. was some major cups won by Columbia, bro. Can we like talk yes. about that for a second, sure. dude? So Black Tuna and Colombian Exotics took first at Dabadoo, right? For the best hash. Yeah. Um, 
and we took well not we but with black tuna strings they took uh first place in the non in, in the solvent list in the solvents category yeah, the with solvents, the best, right with the best uh with the best BHO wow so that there's also like for example the mango lemonade strain and the black jaguar which is everything that that tasted like which is pretty much colombia and one fucking like you open that and that that's colombia for you Ooh. um that's where amnesia gets his fucking uh terps from you know uh that's all that right. old school jack terp people hate it but that's 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 our roots you know like yeah. the hazes and everything is because people never have gotten a proper haze they've never gotten a proper um you know a proper uh, myrcene with limonene blend, and, and mm. they, they just think it's it's a swag or it's bad. Right. Um, but they've never had those psychedelic effects. But nobody's gonna take a strain to twelve weeks. Nobody's gonna yeah. take a strain to you know to thirteen weeks, and that's what some of those strains require. You know, to, to finish right. up. Um. So definitely, like when you do that proper, uh, it showed to kick everybody's ass in in the terp profile and, and in the effect. Um, so shout out, uh, to, to Terpene, um, for that win and yeah, shout out to Milo. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Terpene dad they, on Instagram where he changed yeah. it recently, right? I forget what it yeah, is now, yeah, but I'll make yeah. sure we have yeah, that up there. Everybody's getting their shit closed, bro. So I just call yeah. them by their name though. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry if they didn't want to be known, but you, yeah. everybody wants to be known. We're not going to jail anymore, fellas. We yeah. can be known. All right, yeah. So, yes, yeah, shout out to Milo because that was a very good job and he took it. He whipped their ass. Um, Huge, bro. And, and, and that's what it is. You know, like, that's what we got to keep. Doing. I got multiple but, texts that day. It was like, bro, huge day for Columbia. I was like, what's up? Like, bro, two massive wins over there. And it, it was just like, oh, and what? And in the extractions, I was like, of course, bro, like hardcore r crushing it over there. Right. And like, that's a big, Hard. how do you, how do you say like, that's a big, uh, I mean, caliber, right? Like, that's a pretty high entry level over bro, there, right? I for, would assume. For, uh, it's super high, bro. It's like, and, and this year, what was funny is that this year, United States was there very hard. Wow. You know, like, right. we had people, like, feeling frosty. You know, that guy's selling $100 grams, you know, of live resin. The guy has, you know, he has all the tools to 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 be winning those cups 100 and there right. he, he won the cup for his category but yep. you know people were at his level right like and he was telling people like yo your, your shit's fucking at the level that it's supposed to be That's so sick. and especially for us to see that it was amazing the ego clash me and mauro uh we placed fourth but then they just took away the the third places uh they got disqualified like a week ago third place got disqualified so mauro and me got bumped up to third no dude congrats brother so Heck yeah colombia has an ego clash now wow crazy. bro and do you think like some of those in those i always assume like at the highest caliber and i could be completely wrong but like i always assume a lot of it's indoor but a lot of the stuff from colombia's outdoor is that true now i'm gonna tell you why we whipped ass i'm gonna tell you the reason why yeah, because um, like you said, in the United States and in a whole bunch of places where they have the indoors, it's usually clone only because in Europe, they don't waste time popping beans and stuff. They just bring everything from the States or they buy yeah. the clones that have been bred there correctly because it's a money game and it's a numbers game. And they just want, you know, if runs is Obama runs, OK, it's Obama runs. If it's Skittles, all right, let's fucking do Skittles. Um, and the same thing in the United States for these yeah. people to compete. It's not like us that we have to work our ass off for six months, you know, and fucking do everything from zero and mm -hmm. have like fucking a hundred grams and cry that we have to enter 50 because we're not going to be able to pay the rent, you know, because right. we got to sell that shit to people who already live in like a rec market type of, you know, ambience where they literally just go to their dispensary or to their fucking company, open up the fridge of, Fucking jars and jars and jars and jars and right. jars and jars of produced live resin, yeah, live rosin, right? And all they have to do is see which one's the best. That's it. Like they're gonna yeah. see, oh, which one am I gonna go compete with? But the work's already been done. The strain has already been tested. You know, everything has already been implemented. People already buy those strains in dispensaries and have right. shown to like them, right? Yeah. So, 
So their job is 100% easier. What I did is I'm like, okay, how, how the hell can we match that? Like, what can we do in our playing field that can mm-hmm. do better or maybe not better, but different, right? Because yeah. let's take back the example of wine. Nothing's better than anything. Shit's right. just different, right? That's Good pretty call. much what it is. So how can we be different, right? So we thought, okay, everybody's running clone only. So how about if we take a field of 5,000 plants, right, with a mix of KO and Sherbert, which is a Sherb Shocker cross for Kipambele, mm-hmm. and how about I don't just choose the Kipambele Fino, which punches hard, but yep. is lacking a little bit of the Sherb taste that everybody loves. Yeah. How about if I choose 50 plants with the best characteristics of the whole freaking you know, uh, wow. the whole strain, like the yeah. actual strain, whole spectrum, full spectrum, yeah. not just one. So that opens up a whole different playing field because I selected strains that, you know, gave the terpenes that I wanted. Yeah. I selected strains that gave the punch that I wanted. And I selected strains that gave the return and, and the sauciness of the texture that I wanted. No, oh, right? dude, that's so sick. At the end of the day, I previously blended before actually getting different rosins and blending them. I did the blend in the wash, right? Mm-hmm. So when we took all those different phenols to the wash, we washed that. Um, we made the hash and we made the rosin. All of this process with me and Mauro from Colombian Exotics. Yeah. Um, we did this and we came up with a a complete full spectrum uh extract of what is kipambele right oh. so what i noticed are two things what i noticed is that everybody who was judging our thing uh said that it never stopped appearing on different spots of the palate mm. like the second you smoked it you would have one taste then you would have another taste in your throat uh-huh. You would have another taste on the upper side of your mouth. Yeah. And then when you would talk, you would have a leftover taste different on the <sighs> other side of your throat. Oh, right? my so God, So they bro. couldn't understand what it was because they're like, well, fuck, it's, it's sherb, but it's also candle, but it's also vanilla, but yeah. it's also this. And then another thing that I saw that really took the cake is that everybody was smoking, smoking, smoking. And when they hit our our fucking strain the people even the most experienced ones they had to go get a water break yeah they had to chill they had to fucking like wait a couple <laughs> minutes before continuing That's sick, you bro. know and so those two were the main those two qualities <sighs> were the main things that you know got a strain that i was like they're gonna shit on us with papaya they're gonna shit on us with skittles mm-hmm. they're gonna shit on us with rs11 I told mm-hmm. my, my friends, I'm like, I don't know why the hell we're even going. Like, they're going to completely murder us. Like, you know, we're going to a place where they have everything. The whole menu A from Z, you know, they right. have all these, you know. So at the other day, it was like, when Jeez. they called our name, I was already like with my backpack going towards the door. Mm-hmm. And Mauro's like, we won. And I'm like, oh my. Wow, I was like, so high, bro. It was so Con- good. The competition was so good. I was. I just wanted to go home, bro. I couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, oh definitely a milestone. Would you say Shit. that's like a milestone moment? If not, definitely one for the books. Hey, like as far as the adventure you guys have been on since we've met, bro. To see that, I'm like, holy dude. That was again multiple messages of people over in Spanibus over there. It was from all over the place, bro. It was just for me. I was even proud, dude. And I'm like you said. I'm not actually even Colombian, and I'm just. I felt it's just associated, and I felt proud of like just Colombian, the, the, the speech I've been putting behind it over for the last little bit, but dude, we've been on for like an hour and five and I know you've been traveling. You're tired as heck and I want to respect your time and thank you for even taking this long. But dude, before we go, tell us like, you know, where, where else is the best place? I'm, Oh, I think before we go, let's take one of these together, bro. I don't think you even had the chance to rip yours. Did you? No, I've been talking and, and we didn't really even talk about the black tuna news. But well, let's hit it, bro. I don't have to go anywhere. If you're down to chill, I want to no, keep quickly, quickly, quickly. Please yeah. hit it, bro. Oh, hit it. it. We were talking about the Nicole Kush crosses for yes. For, see how high we are. We're so high. We always let's keep going, bro. Please, yeah. But 
Um, so yeah, the first crosses since we made it for LPs and in LPs, we were like, all right, fuck it. Now this year, like you said, I went yeah. to Spain. We've been around. We see what people like. We see what the competition is like. We see, you know, the RS11, the soap, all blah blah blah, the Georgia pies, the cookies, all this fucking you know hype, the great yeah. gases. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Uh, so then I'm like, okay. I've tasted everything already. You know, we went to the cups. We've tasted the RS11s. You know, our homie ABF, Brian, he's been the biggest, you know. Uh, now now ABF Latam is coming really hard because ABF Latam is me, Brian. You know, Heck so it's yeah, pretty bro. much black tuna and always be flowering together. That's ABF Latam. So, Beautiful. So now we're going to come down with the heat, like like real, real stupid, crazy heat, you know, that's been in, in, in you know, in, in his libraries for years. Uh, strains have been the backbone of a lot of industries in the United States and the world. Heck yeah, we're bro. we're going to start working them and we're going to bring them back and we're going to put them with a the new school. It's going to be crazy. So then seeing all these things, I noticed that in the black tuna stable, you know, we've had all these terps. You know, we've just had them with different names. You know, I've had an RS11 terp exactly like the one that Brian brought me in the live resin exactly from the cut. That wizard trees and all those motherfuckers yeah. broke. And I smell it, and I'm like, okay, smell this scorpion venom. You know, the scorpion venom has sher- uh, sherbet, um, and it has, like, the GB6 tricks and sherbet, but it also mm-hmm. has uh, the face-off uh, OG, right? So, yeah. but the sherbet is very dominant, but it also has the gas, right? So the RS-11 is just, you know, a different type of sherbet. So yeah. when I smell the RS-11, I smell my scorpion venom, I'm like, holy fuck, it's the same shit. Right. I can call my scorpion venom RS-11, and not even the fucking owner would know. You know, mm-hmm. so right. I started noticing these things, uh, especially with a whole bunch of strains. Like I have a trap punch that's going to be the donor of the new line. That yeah. trap punch, we we hunted it uh, from Oni Seedstock when he used to work with Bloom before Bloom become Bloom Seed Co. Harry Palms used to work, you know, the genetic builds up and all the genetic things for Oni Seeds. Yeah. And, and that's why like the, the Tropicana Cookies Cross is so beautiful because it was actually worked with Harry Palms. Uh-huh. And everything that comes after that with that strain is proper. You know, the, the, the Tropicana Punch with the Purple Punch. Purple Punch is one of the most hated strains in the world. But Black Tuna Hunter, the only Purple Punch that has great flavor. Yeah. You know, and that's super fucking hard to get. Uh, we were talking with it with Brian, you know, because the Trop Punch that I have is actually grape, complete grape candy. Like, complete right. grape candy. And I didn't even think about it until people brought grape gas or brought grape this and grape whatever and i'm like it's amazing you know but fuck my trap punch is more grape than that oh, you know so if that's right. what people like then fuck it all I'll, I'll throw it you know like I, I i haven't thrown it because i didn't know that i thought yeah. you guys wanted grape gas but it, once they bring me grape and all the things grape i see oh i have this i've had this yeah like, I, I didn't know you guys like it so <laughs> so the new sick, line bro. is that you know it's coming yeah. back with a whole bunch of stuff have been there dormant and now Beautiful. we're going to revive and bring other stuff that haven't been there obviously um and do a whole bunch of of, of flavors like an ice cream shop right because before yes. it was very production and resin and get you high but now it's literally going to be like okay you like chocolate here's chocolate you like vanilla here's vanilla you like candy grape or you like a green yes. apple or what do you want you know because that's yeah. what you're going to get and and I think that's that's what what I'm most happy about with this new uh with this new line. Um the other day I put on a video on Instagram of how you know the pollen was pollinating all the receptors. Um it was a beautiful uh reversal, the Tropicana Punch reversed beautifully. We got a lot of pollen, like sh- uh, tons of pollen. Uh the bees came in this year also and helped us. So every time the bees come it's you know, triple, quadruple the the amount of return on seeds that we get. If a plant gave us, you know, 2,000 seeds, when bees come, they give you 4,000. You know, wow. it, they double the amounts. Yeah, they, they're real, real heavy pollinizers. Like, they get shit done. Dude, um, I can't and wait. I even have videos of, of bees trying to pollinate cannabis with other pollen. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's like, the, the bee comes, I'll send that picture to you. The bee yeah. comes, and, and we're looking at it. And then I see it just dump a whole bunch of pollen. And I'm like, where the hell did this pollen, where the hell did this bee get this pollen? No we're not doubt. fucking pollenizing anything in the farm. He's trying to make the next it. freak show. Yeah, this freaking and, idiot. And, and I thought he, I thought it was like, it was like some yellow pollen from a yellow 
plant from a yellow flower that's like from the zone. <laughs> yeah. Right? And we're just laughing like, holy <laughs> shit, these fuckers will pollinate anything, you know? Yeah, and that's then, amazing. Obviously, the plant didn't get pollinated because it was a different species of plant, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like they do their work, you know? Dude, um, and so you guys haven't announced the, the flavors yet or the specific crosses on the new line yet? So the specific crosses and flavors, uh, I, I put a post, but Instagram took it down. So I don't know if they're not liking that I'm using, I don't know, maybe I'm using some names that I'm not supposed to be using, like Acai or like, I don't know what the hell fucking Instagram right. now. But right now, yeah, I'll, I'll just go, I'll run down them. We're going to have Atomic Tangerine times Tropicana Punch. So that's oh. going to give... Dude. Has, right it's gonna be crazy like that that's gonna be that's gonna be a real crazy cross we're gonna have the diamond runs times the tropicana punch that's yep. gonna be crazy washer with turps beautiful um we're gonna have it's a larry og times girl scout cookies times tropicana punch cross Oof. um we're gonna have uh acai which is, oh well actually one of my favorites first grapple which okay. is the green apple from the apple shocker yep. times uh, the Tropicana Punch, right? So that was grapple. And Beautiful. ocean spray. Remember the ocean spray, the ones we used to drink? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, the cranberry. Remember cranberry ocean spray and all that? Yeah. Well, ocean spray is the cross of the sherb shocker uh, times the Tropicana Punch. Right, so that's gonna be also like fucking sherby. Good so this is a lot like more fruity person. and like we're getting a lot deeper into a lot more of the depths of fruits and different stuff. For it. bro, you know that's where I love to hang out and and I get down over there so much. And that atomic, uh, what was it the tan the tangerine atomic yeah. that you used in that cross, bro? Yeah. That was that was first place, right at the four twenty. Yeah, that was the first place. Oh, dude, that thing yeah, is that, unreal, that's, man. That's another thing that that I like is, you know, I was talking to to Brian also about this, and you know. There's no use having great genetics if the people don't try them. Yeah. You know, like, I want the people to tell me I have the good genetics. I don't want, you know, the cup. The cup is a, the cup is, to me, the cup is a celebration. Right. You know, to me, the cup is going to see you, going to see our friends. Right. You know, having a good time, smoking together. Yeah. You know, and we use the cup as an excuse for that. Yeah. And somebody yeah. goes home with a cup and somebody, yeah, does that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, But like exactly. I tell people, like, Unless, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily mean I get more sales or that doesn't necessarily mean I go fill up my fucking cup drawer with more cups. <laughs> yeah, nah, right. man. Like, at, yeah. at the end of the day, what more you got is, you know, is the people, the energy, the things yeah. that came out of that. You know, actual people telling you, yo, that's the shit. That's the best. For me, yeah. that's the cup. You know, for me, right. people telling me that, that I win. I'm already a winner. Exactly, you know? bro. For me, so, it's my chance know. to get my flowers in front of your nose to sit down and have a one on one, bro, or like share a doobie over quite a few really knowledgeable growers where we can pick apart our, our stuff and be honest with ourselves in a lot of different ways, bro. And it's that's where it's really cool. And to put yourself at, to see what else is on the scope, bro. And it's just like, yes, I got to go in this direction with these flavors. And dude, that is unreal what you just listed off there, dude, of what, what's coming. And so the names, I'm sure, and some amazing yeah. designs we're going to be seeing coming out on Instagram <laughs> here over the next bit. Yeah, it's, it's going to get crazy. We already tested all the lots. So the names come from pretty much, uh, it's the most dominant crosses that came up on all the lots. So for example, Toron has. Uh, is like how will you say that in English? Toron has is like the stock. Yeah, grapefruit. Grapefruit. So yeah. The grapefruit fino, uh, it's more acidic. So the atomic tangerine gives it the citric, and then the trop, it definitely throws in a, a, a nice like uh, candy acidicness, right? So it, yeah, it really comes nice. out like a pomegranate, right? So out of ten, yes. ten seeds, uh, five are pomegranate and the other five are atomic lenient or trop lenient right? and are these fems so or are these going rags these are fems yeah these Dude, are all fems. this is sick um, I'm gonna and got then it's, the same it's a room to test spray. for that one bro <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and grapple and everything is, is gonna be crazy um also yeah uh the acai uh everything is very lenient to what grape will give you in the in the mix right okay um and at the end i think grape is something that you know needs still to be worked on a little bit right we we have a lot of grape but but i haven't seen real grapes uh like at least mine 
or those old school GDPs, right? And and that's where I think literally like my grape comes from. My grape comes from the granddaddy perp and, and the the purple mm-hmm. punch cross for sure. Right. You know, because I remember the granddaddy purples and the granddaddy purples, they were gas, but they were candy. You know, the GDPs back in the day, 2006, seven and eight, um, we never called it candy because, you know, back in the day we referred to good cannabis as gas. Right. Right. But, but that was definitely like one of the first candy gas strains, you know, in South Florida was definitely the granddaddy purples or GDPs. Right. Um, and that's where that fucking purple punch comes from. It comes from that GDP lineage. So definitely that had to be done. It had to be worked. I had to get that little spine off my back and be like, okay, fuck it. Let's, let's do this grapey as hell. And even I'm probably, I hope for the event, I have some right now, but I don't know if I'm going to smoke it all or just going to fucking live. But I wanted to have the turp profile of the donor of the actual Tropicana Punch, Fino. So we extracted it a couple of weeks ago. And what the fuck is this shit? Like? So yeah, there we go. And Beautiful. this pretty much, it's been, I like to like, Cause you know, us potheads, we smell everything like mango or like whatever. Yeah. So I, I grab people that don't smoke weed, like my maid or somebody. And I just put this in her nose and I'm like, okay, what do you smell? And she goes, oh my God. Yeah. That's different than anything that you've had here. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that smells like candy, That but that smells like, like, you know, those, those crayons, those scented crayons, it smells like a scented grape crayon, like a, like a, oh, like yeah. a fake chemical grape. She told me like that. Does, that's not even like real grapes. Yeah. That's like. What what those guys yeah. in the companies do to to, to fucking yes. you know the great postalon and shit, and I'm like, so what? when I get those feedbacks, I'm like, all right, guys, we're onto something. No you know, doubt, we, dude. We can you know if we get this and we get it out there and everybody's you know seeing and smelling what she just said that knows nothing about cannabis, this is gonna be wild. Oh, you know I can't wait saying? to go. I can't wait to get out there, bro, and try this. I can't get out there soon enough, and I'm gonna make sure we stay out a, a good. Two weeks, I think we're planning yeah, at least a full yeah, week, bro. Yeah, come. but we yeah, are, we're going to make... Oh, yes, dude. <laughs> dude, the so famous diamonds, bro. <laughs> that was such a <laughs> breakfast, man. That's what broke my fast that day, and we were going uh, out on that hunt. Um, so the best place for everyone to to, to keep in touch and to, to see this... Or, but hold on, but that's going to be the Instagram, which we have it all up, and that's obvious. It's in the description. We've been showing it here the whole time, but the, the question for those in the U.S., bro, is there... Is there a way, is there anyone in the States that's going to have these anywhere? Is there anyone that they can bug to get these? This this year, we're going to go hard with Always Be Flowering, which is our homie. And three of the crosses in the drop four are yep. collabs with him. So he's going to have those collabs up on his website in the U.S. Beautiful. That's a done deal, you know? Um, there it is. So you guys are going to get, like, Pretty much the best crosses, which is going to be, yeah, like the the Toronjas, the pomegranates, you know, the champagne, because the Delta Diamond times Trop is called Champagne, so yeah. champagne in Spanish. Uh, and it's just beautiful, you know. It's, uh, so you guys are going to get um, a whole bunch of stuff this time. That is sick, dude. There it is. Yeah, because that's the question all the time. So there's actually some in the States, ABF, Always Blue Flowering, that you guys can check out. And obviously... Bug the heck out of CV420 on Instagram following because you always post in some some cool stuff, bro. Your adventures, what's going down. Um, and then the Black Tuna Co. on Instagram as well, brother. Yeah, man. And and like I said, this year is going to be great for Home Grow and, and for Black Tuna because you're going to come and be able to show a lot of people, um, you know, our, our, our production line and how... How we get to what we get to so people can enjoy it, right? At the end yes. of the day, you know, there's there's a lot of love and there's a lot of work behind everything. And uh, now we see it in, in, produ- in, in production sites, right? Like these these black tuna strains that are being grown, um, you know, they're being exported to Germany and people are actually smoking these things. Um, <laughs> they're having access to these things and it's Hell cool. Yes. Um, I'm going to launch something. I'll give you a little sneak peek of what we're going to launch. It's going to be cool. I'm going to do Charlie and the Seed Factory. And <laughs> Charlie Fuck and the yes. Seed Factory, just so you get a nice little heads up. Maybe we can even, 
you can help me do it. Um, I think I would love to, bro. That in the sick. new in the new launch in the packages. Yep. I'm gonna stick in some golden tickets. Shut up, dude. And in those golden tickets, I haven't really, you know, figured it out yet. But I want the winners to come, all expenses paid, to the fucking grow. Yeah. See where they're made. You know, <laughs> it has to be, thing, bro. That go is go to the land, go to everything, the drying rooms, the uh, the seed room, wow. like the sorter, the selector, the strains. Go smell everything, the jars. Yeah. The extracts. You know, and then come home with a gift pack with all the genetics. That is amazing, <laughs> dude. That is so sick. You have to do that, bro. So that's a thing, huh? That's going down, and that's going to be with, with, with Black Tuna on the new on the new crosses launches, dude. Yeah. That is such a a slick idea, bro. So just get ready to get absolutely blown up now on the questions and launch dates and stuff behind that. And for you guys watching, definitely just yeah, stay tuned to Instagram's the best place to. To be able to see what's going on there, bro. That is sick, man. And so, yeah, definitely we'll be getting a behind the scenes view and a chance to be able to check it out. Is timing going to be cool in July for? Yes, for timing's going to be for- cool. All I have to do is um. So I told uh, the the Puffco team wants to do a uh, like just um like a document on the hash scene for Colombia, right. and that's the twenty second. That's literally the twenty second and twenty third. So with you, anything, I wanted to see if you either get, but two days before the event would be too heavy because I'm running with a whole bunch of shit. So yeah, I was thinking good to know. Yeah. the 24th, which is what day? I think the 24th is, I'll tell you right now, the 24th of July is a Monday, yeah. yeah. So I was thinking that Monday we could go to the farm together, just us with your team and only your camera and only focused on you. Heck because yeah, bro. what one of my friends said is like, why don't we just, you know, you choose one day and we take everyone. But I'm like, nah, everyone's take is different. You know, these guys want to do hash, you know, home grow TV covers like the whole fucking black tuna thing. He does it with style and yeah. me and him have more flow. Like when it's us too, you know, we don't want nobody to screw around with us. So, yeah. um, I planned it like that. And I was thinking you would love it because it's a day that I could dedicate to you, your team. And, and we could really dig deep into everything. Right. Dude, that would be sick. And then we'll have the year before, a year and a bit after, and it's going to be a great follow-up show of everything, bro. So yes. definitely, guys, stay tuned for that. Check everything out. Um, bro, I know it's late over there. And so, <laughs> dude, and that these dabs hit me nice and, and beautiful over there. So I'm going to – we're going to end it off here, dude. I think we got to do this again and pick it up again. Maybe at the launch day we'll do it live and ch- chill out. Actually, you know where it'll be, bro? It'll be at the Cup. That will be the next content piece oh, where yeah. we're actually live together and rocking it out. We'll be judging, checking out some buds. But Oh, uh, yes. For everyone tuning in, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Throw a like down. Throw a comment down. Thank you for supporting the show, guys. And we'll see you guys next week on Homegrown TV. Thank you for everything, my brothers.